Hello YouTube. This time we have uh, quite an interesting little board right here. I just want to show here. And uh, I can actually do this two-handed because I bought a tripod for my iPhone. This is a small one so I can see if tripods are something that uh, I could get used to. So far I guess I could. Anyway, the start of the show is this little board right here. And this massive cooler that uh, jumps out immediately. As you can see, we got uh, three PCI slots and an HEP 8X slot here. So, what that suggests is that this board is probably about 10 years old, and you would be correct. It's from 2005. It's made by Asus. It's the P5PE-VM. The interesting part about this board is that it can take DDR memory, has an Intel 8 series chipset, but it supports first gen Core 2 Duo CPUs. I'm not kidding, there is a Pentium Dual Core E2180 down there, and it can even support up to a Core 2 Extreme X86, uh, no, that's 6800, sorry. So, it supports a Core 2 Duo Extreme CPU, while it still uses dual channel DDR memory. 2 gigabyte DIMMs are not very common on the DDR platform, so that pretty much means that you can't really use more than about 2 gigs on this board. With a card to extreme and 4 gigs of RAM, you can still get a pretty potent gaming rig right there. Or at least some uh, a PC that can pretty much do anything these days for, uh, you know, web browsing and whatnot. And uh, of course, it has the limitation that it's AGP and not PCI Express, because that was introduced with the Intel 9 series chipset. And this is still an 865 PE, so. And the fastest uh, cards you could ever get on uh, AGP is from the NVIDIA camp is the. Uh, I believe the 7900 uh, or 7950 GT, I don't know if there's an AGP version of that. If not, it's the 7800. And uh, at least the GS, the GT, I think too. And in the ATI camp, it's the Radeon HD4670 AGP made by HIS. Which is a very cool, very cool graphics card, I must say. But anyway, I don't really have all that uh, fancy stuff. It's just a very basic board still has uh, two IDE connectors, two SATA down here. And by the way, I apologize for lighting conditions, but it's uh, hot outside, so I've got everything closed down. We also have, we still have floppy, and uh, you know, if we take a look at the side panel here, or the back, whatever you want to call it, we have PS2 ports, serial parallel VGA, so we've got a full array of uh, legacy ports. We've got four USB 2.0 ports, Gigabit Ethernet by Marvell, and uh, regular stereo audio on board, which is a Realtek ALC850 AC97 codec. So all in all, it has some pretty basic features, it's pretty legacy compatible, pretty much in every single respect, but also has the forward compatibility that Asus seems to really like to do with these kind of boards. I have an AM2 Plus board upstairs that can also take pretty much any AM3 CPU including Phenom 2 X6s, well, the board was made in 2000, early 2006. That's an M2N 68 AM Plus, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So, yeah. You might ask, why the hell are you showing us this really old board? Well, this cooler isn't on here for, for, uh, for no reason. Well, reason one is I broke the stock cooler push pins. Because I fucking hate push pins. I had all three push pins in. Yeah, all three, so you can guess what happened. The fourth one actually broke. I tried to pull it, push it through the board. Push pin was in the unlocked position, so I pushed it through. And for some reason, the left side of the push pin just uh, snapped. It was gone. So I had to buy a new cooler, and I bought this uh, Scythe Katana 4. It was pretty cheap, pretty decent cooler. It's only 60 watt CPU and uh, 65 watt CPU under there, and they're good overclockers. So I guess you now know what I'm going to do with this. Inspired by a Max Arcade's video from uh, quite a while back, really. He had an, uh, I believe, an E2160. And he overclocked that to a 2.4 very easily. I intend to overclock this as well and see what it does. It would be pretty cool to have a system with DDR1, a card to dual class CPU, well, Pentium Dual Core in this case, and an AGP card. It's actually quite funny. So you have both legacy and semi-modern components all in one package. So yeah, that pretty much concludes this video on uh, my Asus P5PE VM and uh, the overclocking project that uh, I'm going to do with it this summer. 
Expect a video uh, about that pretty soon. I'll see what I can cook up. And uh, we're going to have some overclocking fun with this uh, little board. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and I thank you all for watching.